What's up guys, so welcome to the start of a brand new series here on the channel. This, my friends, is Jurassic World Evolution 2. So, I've really been looking forward to this game. I remember playing the first one back in 2018. I loved it, you guys loved it. It was a fantastic series, so I'm hoping we can bring that same energy this time around. And uh, it looks good. It looks like there's a bit more focus on story. We've got some interesting new gameplay mechanics and stuff. Like, it, it, it looks like it's a major improvement after what was already a really great game so i'm excited to check this out hope you guys are too huge thank you to frontier for the early access the game doesn't come out until november 9th next tuesday and um we can play and post it early which is amazing so hope you guys are ready for this and uh let's get into it jurassic world this this is where our story begins A scientific breakthrough any consideration of the consequences. <laughs> Funny how that so goes. Nature did what it does and unleashed chaos. This time, we were deeper into the illusion of control and the chaos brought something much worse. And for a moment, we remembered how precious life is. Time has a funny way of softening our memory of what it's like to lose control. And ambition. Ambition is a persistent thing. For the dinosaurs left behind, time was becoming immaterial. From miracles of science to assets destined for exploitation. The auctioning him off? It's never a good idea. Perhaps it's time to reflect on the true nature of nature. An endless cycle with one goal, survival. And this means that dinosaurs and humanity have to find a way to work out their differences. It's going to be up to us to make that happen. Live in harmony, baby. Here we go. Starting off the campaign in Arizona, of all places. To us, a desert is a wasteland devoid of anything but the most extreme examples of life. But creatures once thrived in these lands hundreds of millions of years ago. Given the geological history that we're dealing with, Dinosaurs walking among the tumbleweeds isn't that much of a stretch. It's crazy the to think about. situation where dinosaurs are running wild is untenable to those in charge. Well, those that think they're in charge. So we're left with a problem or an opportunity. This is where you come in. <laughs> They've ignored my warnings before, but maybe this time with you, it's going to be different. I'm willing to embrace the uncertainty. So the Department of Fish and Wildlife for the U.S. is now in charge of wild dinosaurs. This is going to be interesting. Okay, I guess an introduction is in order. I'm Cabot Finch, Assistant Director of the U.S. Department of Fish and Wildlife. I know it sounds important, because it is. <laughs> but let's not get bogged down in labels and titles and organizational flowcharts. I'll make this easy. You work for me. See, nothing to it. <laughs> You'll be working with the experts. This is Claire Deering and Owen Grady. Nice. And yes, we have first-hand experience with the dinosaurs. I'm the former operations manager at Jurassic World. Owen and I actually helped build the park. It's a great track record you've and got. And unfortunately, we were there to witness its destruction. And this is Owen. He works with velociraptors. You could call me a dinosaur wrangler, though officially I'm an animal behaviorist. I was just building a level of trust with them when this happens. Okay, so we'll need to get a few things in place ASAP. Start with a response facility, equipped with both a ranger team 4x4 and a capture team helicopter. Okay, so we're going to start building our facilities, response facility. This is going to be your, you know, enforcement. I guess we can place them right back here. Looks good to me. Then, of course, we're going to have to uh, build a generator to be able to we power it. Excellent progress. 
So let's stay focused. Next and then we're gonna step, have to build pads to connect them. Generator, then feeding the energy it creates to the response facility. And also make sure the building is connected to the path network. It only does us good if it's operational. So now we wait to see these things built. Dude, this oh, it looks so good. Response facility is just about done and Thank you very much. We're to locate and tranquilize we nearby trouble tracking this dinosaur Baryonyx. The and even more trouble if we're lucky enough to find it. Then the sensible thing is to take a capture team helicopter. You can trank it from the air. See? I like the way I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we're going to go up into the air and we're going to see if we can find these Baryonyx. Locate priority dinosaurs in the surrounding area using the compass at the top of the screen. Approach it, use R to switch to aim mode, and then while in aim mode, we can fire Trank darts. See, this this is the cool part. There's there's a little bit more of like a, a traversal environment part to it that we didn't have before. So we're going to swap over to aim mode here. We're going to have to set our guy up to potentially shoot his shot. Oh, baby. Get a little bit closer. Could probably go for a headshot. Might help out a little bit, but... Okay. We're about 67%. Oh, missed him. Got him there. That's going to put him at 100%. Beautiful. Clear. This is Owen. I copy you. We have it. Capture successful. I knew you'd do it. Never had a doubt. Really? Well, maybe one or two. Well, it's better than usual. I'll take it. Now, where do we take this dinosaur? We have the enclosure. We just need you to deliver. Hey, don't I always? Wait, uh, you don't have to answer that. Okay. So now all we're going to have to do is deliver this thing. So I believe we can uh, request a transport. Let's pick him up. And then we're going to be able to move him over into the... Already designated pen. Okay, pretty simple so far. Your boy's just out here saving lives. Is, is all there is to it. We've got time. Can accelerate time. Moderate the use so you don't run into problems and stuff. But uh, yeah, all right. So let's speed up time a little bit. They're gonna drop him down. John Hammond was concerned about what would happen if dinosaurs lived in the wild. It adds a whole new level of challenge, and perhaps opportunity. Opportunity to make some money. Sounds good to me. Looks like our, our little transport plane is coming in here. Hopefully he's he's nice and comfortable with his new accommodations. Just bring him on down here. And there we have it. Welcome home, buddy. Ooh, look at the little footprints that he's leaving. Oh, I instantly recognize this dinosaur. Kind of hard to forget once you've been trapped in a room with one. We couldn't save that Baryonyx, but we can certainly help this one. He's beautiful. All right, so you can see his statistics here. Looks like health is good. If we take a look, comfort. Need to send a ranger team in first. Consume. So we'll need a feeder inside the perimeter of that enclosure. Hungry dinosaurs make me nervous. Can't disagree with you there. So I guess we're going to go with a, a Pisivore feeder. Go ahead and throw that there, and that's gonna have uh, have some fish in it. We did not have those before in the past. Is he? He he is a um. What do you call it when you only eat fish? Pescatarian. That's duh Happy. duh. Okay. okay. We need to get a full assessment of the dinosaur's health. Utilize a ranger team vehicle. Owen will help you get a status of the animal's overall welfare. Then we can plan our next move. We really need that. Plan. I mean. I've always been more of a just make it up as I go kind of guy. Tell you what, if this doesn't work, we'll try your way. Hmm, that sort of sounds like a plan. Okay, so ranger teams are going to provide the latest status or welfare information via status check. Construct ranger posts inside your enclosure so they can cover all of your species. Ranger teams can be assigned to patrol ranger posts and auto uh, will periodically status check all dinosaurs in range. Ah, so that's a way to kind of automated a little bit so we're gonna roll up on the the baryonyx here i don't really know 
Do I have to trank him? Ah. Condition reported. He's missing a rock, but he is 78% comfortable and 100% health. We still have to do what we can to get the dinosaurs more comfortable. Whoa, 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 whoa. In Arizona. Sunscreen and drinks by the pool? How's that sound? Are you seriously asking? Or pretend asking? Okay, Claire. How about we add some preferred terrain to their pens instead? Better? I mean, sunscreen sounds pretty nice, too. You got to make sure you watch out for those UV rays. But yeah, he was, uh, he was... He was getting a little a little testy that we were in there, huh? Don't really like that. That's all right, buddy. I uh, I respect it. I just love appreciating the dinosaurs, dude. Just watching them walk around in their natural habitat. This game looks so good. Okay, so we want to get him up to a 95% comfort. Let's uh, let's check what's what's he at again. So we're at a 78%. We're missing a rock. Looks like we could. I mean, he's down for cohabitation. We definitely need more rock. And that's actually about it. So we could throw some some desert rocks in here. We've got some different rock formations. Trying to see how all the different things work. Can put a big... Oh, I like the little shake with that big rock there. We could put some little rocks around our big rocks. You know, switch up the... Uh, the looks a little bit beautiful. Put some, some rocks over on this side as well, dude. I don't know why I like the, the big boom of the rock so much. So we could put that one there. I mean, we could put a random one, you know, kind of over here. I like how the little ones don't make it boom, but the big ones do. We've got to monitor these dinosaurs more closely. That look a lot. Setting up a ranger post inside their enclosure. It's look at a lot crazy. happier. I know, but this will work. Trust me. Homie just needed some rocks, and now he's up to 100%. Okay, so now we're going to set up that ranger post, and I think if we do this, it's going to make it so that we don't have to constantly come in here and send rangers on welfare checks. If we put one, you know, kind of... I mean, can we put it in the water? If we put it in the water, uh, it's going to mess up his lake a little bit, but that's fine. So we've got ranger team one here. We're going to add a task, assign him to ranger post one. Now they're gonna roll out and they're gonna be able to I'll use that ranger post to keep an eye on everyone in this pen. Freely around the, facility, Claire. the reports may be accurate, but they don't paint a complete picture of our current status. Angry dinosaurs on the loose. What am I missing? They're not angry. They're simply acting on instincts. The more threatened the dinosaurs feel, the more hostile they'll become. Especially if they sense survival is at stake. But it is. Both theirs and ours. Yeah, but only we know that. <laughs> Now, anyway. We'll start by tranquilizing one of the dinosaurs from the helicopter, and then have a transport team bring it back to the facility. Great. Do it. All right. So we've got some more dinos that are roaming around, so let's go ahead and uh, control the helicopter. Let's get this bird airborne and go see what we've got. Ooh, we've got... Oh, I think he just attacked our Jeep, so that's unfortunate. But it looks like we've got a few different dinos out and about. So try a couple triceratops over here. Switch over to aim mode and let's see if we can get these guys. Gonna hit him. Just gonna get him up to 69% on the sedative. Get him to calm down though. Should be able to get him there. Shoot your shot, baby. Beautiful double hit there. All right, we've got two of those. Let me see. We might be able to transport all three of these, depending on if this last one's going to be a Triceratops or not. It looks like it is. So we're going to make a Triceratops enclosure. We're going to be able to keep all three of these guys in there. We might even be able to cohabitate them with, with our, our current one. I'm gonna swap over. Looks like this guy's already down to take a nap. Get him before he gets up. Oh, you missed, Trev. Got him. Right in the tail. Beautiful. All right. So, we should be able to uh, call in transport teams. What's the button for transport? I need to learn what all the, the keybinds and stuff are. Now, can they cohabitate? Let me, let me check. Hold on a second. Metabolism... I don't remember how to tell if they can cohabitate or not. I'm tempted to just try it and see what happens. All right, let's let's move this guy in here. If he's okay with it, we'll be able to move these two as well. 
We gotta be careful that they're, they're trank. Oh, they've got eight minutes left, so we should be fine. So let's move this one over to start. If it goes well, we'll move the other two. If it doesn't go well, we'll figure it out. To be honest, I'm 95% I'm sure this is not gonna go well. I, I, I'm almost positive this is an awful idea. So let's, let's watch his comfort level here. He doesn't like the helicopter coming in. No, his cohabitation is okay. Let me check his. Requires a status check. The ranger team's coming in to go to the thing. Beautiful. So they automatically do that. He wants more population. He does not like his cohabitation. Okay. So Triceratops cannot, cannot cohabitate. So what we're going to do, and you don't, I mean, obviously, oh gosh, we might have started a fight. Oh, they're going to back away for the first one. Let's build up a fence really quickly, and then we'll we'll figure this out. I think I'm going to try to make this about the same size. Don't you mess with my Triceratops, friend. I see you over here thinking about being naughty. Don't you even think about it, all right? Just just walk on by. Okay, we, we got to be careful, though. We still have time on these guys, right? I don't know if it's like real time, in-game time, how it works. It looks like it's real time, so we've got four minutes left. I guess um, let's... Let's move this guy over. Obviously, we're going to need trees. We're going to need water. We're going to need quite a bit of stuff. So let's just start with the stuff that we absolutely know we're going to need. So I'm going to say water. Let's make a... Uh, let's go a little bit smaller on the radius, but let's make like a cool... Shoot, we can't... I wanted to make like a cool S or something, but we can't move it now because he's being dropped off there. I guess we could maybe go with like a T kind of. Would be kind of interesting. Maybe something like that. Let's try to do something a little a little bit different. So we've we've got that there and we're gonna wait. We're gonna wait till these guys get in before we start adding plants and stuff, because I don't exactly know what they the want. Asset. So let's just uh transporting asset. Let's move everyone. You're the first to move in, buddy. Congrats! <laughs> Dude, he is knocked out. Delivery has been completed. Alright. Successful delivery. So let's see what we've got going on here. Um, we are... We need uh, more water. Uh, I think we need... He's roaming. He's, for, he's forming his territory. He hasn't formed it yet. So he's going to want water. He's going to want ground fiber. He's going to want more population. We definitely need a lot of a lot of ground fiber. We're also going to want to set up the, um, the... What's it called? The guard post in here. So they can come and... Uh, and kind of take a look at it. Overall, I'd say our operations are improving. I'm we'll see confident how that goes. we may get a handle on this yet. But I'm also concerned, specifically about our biodiversity. Still, for now, let's focus on getting the dinosaurs safe and secure, as well as building some additional viewing galleries the DFW staff can use to monitor the animals. Okay. So, dinosaurs of the same species form, uh, form territory around them as they move. Dinosaurs only consider the area inside their territory when determining their comfort level. Ah, so they can be, like, it's not pin-based now, it's territory-based. Let's definitely start putting some, some ground brush and stuff, though. They're definitely gonna want, they're gonna want fibrous ground cover, I believe. So let's add, add some of this throughout here, just make it look nice. Obviously, the, the grass would grow kind of closer to the, uh... The water more than anything else. So we've got that going on at least. Ooh, look at these guys. Like big dogs just running around all excited that we're here. I'm excited you guys are here too. You know what? Believe it or not. Oh yeah. You get up in that plant. Look at this guy taking taking a little bath. Slaying it around in the oh, oh. Okay, he's feeling a little bit feisty. Not really sure what he's up to. Let me see. Uh, let's let's see. Looks like Cohab is is good. Pop is good. Actually, kind of could potentially prefer a little bit more um, population. Could use a little bit more ground uh, ground fiber as well as water if we wanted. But overall, looking pretty good. So I guess I mean it wants us to build a, a, a you know research lookout station, whatever you would call it. I'm. I'm gonna do some more ground ground fiber here. I guess leafy climbers. We can we can throw some of this stuff in just to kind of mix it up a little bit. And we could put some trees in. 
or we could go with ornamental shrubs. I kind of like the idea of some ornamental shrubs. So let's let's put some uh, some shrubs in here. Maybe some palm trees, just to kind of make things look a little bit a little bit different, a little nicer. You know, have have a little bit of verticality to it, and uh, that should. That should be a good a good spot. So yeah, they want us to build a uh, a viewing platform, I believe, a viewing facility. So I'm gonna put this right along the front side here. Should be able to see them as they graze around and you know, kind of get in the water and do whatever else that rhinoceros or, or triceratops do. Not rhinoceroses. What are you even talking about here, Trev? Look at him. Oh, he's gonna settle down and in, in for a nap. He's obviously very happy with his uh, his living accommodations here so we're going to set this thing up and then we're going to want to connect it to our pathway as soon as this is done which we can speed up a little bit hopefully bam there it is technically that's good but it wants a little bit more so i guess i mean really we we could you know kind of extend the uh the pathway and bring viewing areas over on this side as well i'm i'm down for that we've we've got the money to be able to do it so let's let's set up one here we're gonna have it looking out this way, and then we're gonna set up a, uh, a second one over here, looking out the other way, so everything can be seen. With so many of the animals running free, our priority has to be capturing as many of them as possible. We can coordinate our efforts from an expedition center. Get one built, and we'll take it from there. One thing I didn't even notice is <laughs> we pretty much made mirrored lakes in here too. I. I did not intend to do that, but uh, from a top-down perspective, we're looking pretty symmetrical as well. That's that's fantastic. All right, so we're going to make a, uh, a research facility, I believe, or an expedition center. I'm sorry. This is going to allow us to hire some scientists, send them out on expeditions, be able to find some fossils and, and make some new dinos. So let's see. Uh, I'm thinking, you know, maybe over here. We'll go into our control room here. We're going to be able to take a look at the scientists that are available for recruitment. So we've got Hiromi Hara. Kimberly Growers and Benjamin Warren. They're all level one. Obviously, they're going to develop with time. They've got different costs per minute. So we've got logistics here, logistics and welfare, and then logistics and genetics. They've each got different traits, unrest limit, task time, cost of research tasks. That's pretty good right there. And honestly, genetics is something pretty important. He's going to cost us the most, but I think he's the best. So... Let's go ahead and go with him. Go recruit another one. I'm gonna say. You see you, Miss Claire? Yeah, I sure am. Let's just go with the this two most expensive ones. This is our first live capture opportunity. Let's not miss it. We should assign that scientist you just hired to the task. Agreed. Okay, sounds good Owen, to me. You there? I think you're still muted. Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, good idea. Uh, what do we got to lose? You know, except the, maybe a new recruit. Okay. Ooh. Incident alert. Our operatives in the field have received an instant alert about a dangerous dinosaur proximity to the public in the outskirts of Las Vegas. Two injuries have been reported and we need to send a live capture expedition immediately to capture and contain the threats. Let's send our scientists to go do it. Looks like it's going to be over here. Okay. It's going to take two of these. Each of these guys can do that. I'm going to say let's, let's send growers because she's good at that and has good traits and whatever else okay nice so we're gonna send before the remote capture teams return we should have enclosures ready for the dinosaurs think of it as welcoming them back home for sure okay so we're, we're gonna send her out and we're gonna want to make sure that we have enclosures ready to go for when she comes back so i'm gonna go ahead and start building an enclosure here try to line everything up your boy likes a bit of symmetry, that's for sure. Now, I do think we've been a, a little bit generous in the the size of the um, the enclosures that we've made so far. I don't think we always have to be so crazy, but uh, it is it is nice, I guess. Bring this one to about here, 90 degree angle. Bring it up. We're gonna want to build this around our. Uh, our little generator here. The Stegosaurus has been captured. It was successful. Four, wait, four, four of them were captured. So they're going to be... Uh, yeah, bring bring them in. One, two, three, four. 
Beautiful. All right, we're going to have new Stegosaurus coming in here. So let's, uh, first and foremost, we're going to need to put a, uh, a gate in here. Then I'm thinking we're probably going to want to put one of those observation platforms to make sure that we can... Uh, can see everything put that there beautiful we're gonna want to make sure they've got some uh, some water to be able to to be able to use so I'm gonna maybe put some water like that probably gonna want some um, some more of the you know fibrous stuff all over the place we could put some uh, some nice trees and stuff back here in the background just kind of make it look nice especially for our uh, guests that come in okay that should be a, uh, a fairly easy thing there. Beautiful. We've, we've got to connect our path. We've got to build a, uh, a, a, a thing in here. I'm going to build that in there. I think it's going to need... It's Obviously, it's going to need a, um, a ranger team. So, we're going to assign a ranger team to it. Do we need any electricity or anything? I don't know that we do. So, the ranger team's going to go in here. Let's actually take control of them. I like having control. Oh, we don't want to go that way. We go to the new one. Look at these big beauties. Who's watching now? I'm not following you, Owen. Well, it's just like the dinosaurs are always watching us. So shouldn't we be watching them? Yes, we should. Once we have the dinosaurs comfortably settled into their enclosures, we'll need viewing galleries. What I'm saying. Only you said it. Oh, these guys are fighting. He said something about your mama? Seriously, I can't believe it. That's just unacceptable. That's not a very good roommate, is it? Okay. Dude, this this is seriously so amazing. Like, I, I, I love I just love, like, driving around vibing with these things. Okay, yeah, I'm going to get out of here. Sorry. All right, we're, we're gone. We're gone. I'm going to use our, uh, our handy-dandy little, like, you know, free cam to, to get... A little bit closer and, and keep tabs on these guys. We've got some weird things happening with this guy. I'm wondering if I need to, to save and restart the game. But um, yeah, dude, that that is cool. So let's let's see how are they feeling. Cohab is good. Area just barely good. Pop is good. They need more ground fiber and ground fruit. Okay, so we're gonna add some ground fiber and ground fruit. Um, fibrous ground cover. If we add add some of that, is that going to help with the ground fiber? Let's see. Yes, that puts it there. Now, the ground fruit. Oh, fruit and nut right here. Okay. So, we've got a, a sicket grove. That's going to give us ground fiber, ground fruit, tall fruit. Tall fruit, ground nut. So, he, they, they want they want these guys here. Oh, and those those are honestly pretty pretty nice looking. So we're gonna add a bunch, a bunch in there, and that that should make them very, very happy. Population. I mean, they they almost want a little, a little bit more. They they almost want you know a few more, few more steggies in there. They want more ground fruit though. Okay, you can you can have all the ground fruit that you want. Just take take it all. It's honestly really, really beautiful. So I will never, I will never be upset about that. I'm actually gonna replace all the stuff back here in the back too with it. Beautiful. Okay. So you guys should be uh. Super happy with that. Uh, that now they want more open space. I went too hard, so let's let's make this open space in here. Nicely done. So look at this. We've got three exhibits. Owen, things are looking good. Owen, we have a real problem. I'm trying, Clara, but it's just, well, this is who I am. Not you. Ah, the dinosaurs. Tell me something I don't know. Okay, how about this? There's a massive sandstorm headed our way, and it could wipe out the facility. Without power, the safety of the dinosaurs could be at serious risk. Coop, I gotta take care okay. of this storm, and then I'll give Listen you love, okay? Good we'll boy. Figure this out. Good boy. I let you down before? Actually, no. And I'm planning on keeping it that way. Everything we can do, we will do. We've survived worse. What's a little sand? Dude, these are the the worst part of this game. It stresses me out. You got? I'm sure you guys remember from the last game what you know just a little bit of sand what 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 could it what could go wrong right well unfortunately dinos don't really like sand and they don't like storms and they certainly do not like sandstorms wow look at the trees flowing in the wind and stuff coop really wants some attention right now chelsea hasn't been home 
he's he's a lovey guy. Oh, 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 okay, situation. okay, okay. As much give me as this. I'd obviously love to help out. Give me this. Give me this. So, who's gonna protect the dinosaurs? And our personnel. Yes, of course. I mean, that goes without saying. I'm saying it anyway. It's just, it would be a tragedy to lose these animals again. And by tragedy, I mean huge financial loss. And obviously an embarrassment to those in charge of the DFW. People such as you? Uh, well, actually, exactly me. So, how do we avoid that? Okay, step one. Round up the stragglers and get all the dinosaurs back into their enclosures. Then we'll work on our safety rings. This good? Yes. We'll be okay. This is a plan I can support now and take credit for later. <laughs> I couldn't figure out how to get to our rangers. So we, we obviously had to send out our, our strike team to go, you know, trank the, the dino that got out. And then we had to get our rangers over to, to go fix the hole in the fence. Open your emergency shelters during dangerous storms. Dinosaur escapes to avoid a hit to your safety rating. We don't have one of those yet. Tranky each rampaging dinosaur quickly using aim mode or lock on. Transport the dinos back to their enclosures before they wake up again. Rampaging dinos can damage or destroy sections of your enclosure fence, leaving an open breach. Select a response facility using R uh, and use a ranger team to manually initiate pairs or send them to repair tasks to carry out. Nice. So, that's exactly what we just did. These guys are going to come over here. They're going to fix the fence. Thank you, guys. We've got somebody coming in to move the uh, the tranked dino back in. And I believe our crisis has been avoided. I do. I always like taking a look at the management views because we can kind of see, you know, where where things are looking good. Looks like overall everything is, is good to go currently. Angry Scaly Boy gets airlifted. He's going to get dropped back into his... Uh, Habitat where he belongs. Kind of a bad spot for me to pick. Just right into the tree. Sorry, buddy. Probably could have picked a better spot for you, but um, there it is. Okay. Crisis has been averted. That was a small crisis. Sometimes tornadoes come tearing through and mess everything up, but it's just like the worst, the worst thing ever. Mission complete in Arizona, baby. Love it. Can't can't get over that. Uh, that music. Arizona was secure. The dinosaurs were safe. Finch and the DFW had what they needed to keep the bureaucrats off our backs. For now. But the future? That was something completely different. So there you guys have it. That, my friends, is mission one of the campaign from this game. It looks like we're uh, we're about 20% through, so I guess there's five campaign missions. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. Let me know what you guys want to see. I mean, obviously, I'm very excited to hop in a sandbox, make our own park, build everything up, get a little bit crazy in terms of, you know, some of the breeding opportunities and maybe even dino fight opportunities. Who knows what happens? But um, yeah, let me know what you guys think. If you guys want to uh, to see more of the campaign, happy to do that. I mean, it seems like it's pretty short. It's honestly fun. Like I, I, I like that there's a little bit more of a story to it. There's more exploration activities and stuff. It's not just managing random scenarios. So um, kind of cool, but uh, let me know what you guys want. Thank you guys so much for watching. Drop a like if you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in episode two.